Thanks for staying with us. The word civil is derived from an old French word civil, um, which means relating to law, and also from the Latin word civilis, which means relating to citizen, while the word service is derived from the old French word service, which means aids. The Nigerian civil service has its origin in organizations established by the British in colonial times and has been undergoing gradual and systematic reforms and restructuring since May 29th of 1999 after decades of military rule. However, the civil service is still considered stagnant and inefficient and the, and the attempts made in the past by panels have had little effect. The civil service is bedeviled with ethical and accountability problems which, have, which has over the years constituted a significant drag on the overall growth and development of Nigeria. So today we're asking in response to International Workers Day and driving good governance, what are the work ethics of Nigerian civil servants? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-0384663. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WaysShow. So, no, ma'am, I'm going to start with you. How do you feel about Nigeria civil servants? Hmm. <laughs> Uti, thanks for throwing me under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> You're so kind. You're very welcome. <laughs> but that, 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 that is a feeling that is uh, mixed with a lot of pain uh, and uh, reflection, really. Because I remember uh, when I was a young child, uh, I could remember some of my aunties who were involved in the civil service. In fact, it was the most sought after job uh, uh, placements that people, were, when you're done with university, automatically you had a, 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 a spot or a place either in, in the civil service or in the state uh, a civil service uh, uh, environment. So it was not a problem for a graduate to get a job. Mm -hmm. And even then, some of my aunties who were not even graduates, but because they had some certification or the other, they had opportunities to get into the civil service. It was something of honor and respect at the time. But looking at it, how many years down the line, you don't want your child to end up in civil service because all that you can think about in Nigerian civil service is corruption. Mm. It's about nothing working. It's about putting your file in and then your file disappears. <laughs> it's about magic, if I may borrow that language. A lot of things happening, people going to work, a lot of ghost workers, and then people going to work and not working and expecting to be paid. So it, it's that I, I it's something that's just so painful because this is where this this is the place where a lot of the government the government itself depends on. A lot of work goes on in the civil service that empowers the government to be able to create an enabling environment for its citizens. And they can do and undo a government. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. We've seen it countless times Absolutely. play out in our elections, mm -hmm. in, in different uh, protocols, in different uh, case scenarios. So it's, uh, it's something that we really, really need to look into because we can't go forward having not paid attention to the Nigerian civil service and really correcting what is going on there from the very roots. So, I mean, it's just something that we really need to do something about in the quickest possible yeah. time. It's really an important thing to talk about because um, the civil service is the largest or yeah, if not one of the largest of employers of labor yeah. here in Nigeria today. So um, they have a huge impact. I know that Nigerians, when we think about the way the country is run and what's happening today, our focus tends to be on the politicians, on the leaders. But I mean, the real neck 
if you say the politicians yeah. are the head, the real neck is the public service. And those, I mean, like Norma said, they can afford to wait out eight years yeah. if they don't like you as, you know, as an elected leader. Um, so there's a lot of change that would positively impact this nation if the civil service is going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so excited to have our guest on today. I mean, he's a friend of the house, so he's no stranger to us. Um, and I'm sure that our guests know him very well, but I will introduce him all the same. Kule Lawal is an entrepreneur, idea generator, TEDx speaker, and patriot. He has a keen eye for opportunities based on his experience in the political um, in politics working with NGOs and the federal government he is passionate about Nigeria um, and is what could be termed a detribalized Nigerian he currently serves as the executive di executive director of the electoral college Nigeria and is also the country lead for war chat ng Kale Lawal was uh, once an acting national publicity secretary of the COA party, um, Alliance for New Nigeria senatorial candidate in 2019, and has since transitioned to a non-partisan influential player in politics and electoral matters in Nigeria. Probably the father of politicity is what I like to say. <laughs> but that's just my own title for him. Welcome to the show, Kuli. Thank you very much, Uti. And of course, there's always a great time whenever you're on ways. So I look forward to a great evening as usual. Excellent. So I think I'll throw out the first question. Um, we've had a lot of conversations about civil service and the power that civil servants hold um, and perhaps maybe the lack of um, equitable expectations that the general public has from the civil service compared to um, our politicians and our quote unquote leaders. Um, for you, what is the definition? You know, we like to start with definitions. What is the definition of an ideal civil servant? What should the expectations of us as citizens be of a true patriotic civil servant? So um, if we're not going to use a lot of words, the simplest way to define a civil service is a system that works for a country mm. and its people, not working for self, self of course, uh, selfish ends, or working for a particular person in power, mm -hmm. or working for a particular political party, mm -hmm. or working for a tribe. And you know what's shocking in Nigeria is um, when you look at the whole concept of the country, the first thing you know is uh, what we say in Abuja, show me a DJ and I'll tell you the tribe of the people in the parastata. Mm -hmm. and that's not even supposed, that's nepotism. And um, with, uh, Nigerians have ten tended to look at corruption from just the fact that money is being stolen. But the real definition of corruption is abuse of office, mm -hmm. which means whether you appoint someone who's from your tribe above this thing, you throw down meritocracy and you do a lot of other things. But, you know, it's, it's always shocking when in Nigeria we choose to say politicians are bad, civil services are bad, and then we mortgage our responsibilities yeah. as citizens. What we have, the civil service we have, is product of the people that mm -hmm. are in Nigeria. The politicians we have are a product of the people we have in Absolutely. Nigeria. And that's, so, you know, finger pointing at one person or saying something. Um, it was a common joke we used to have with my friends and I would discuss with the civil service. And this is key. So when, when, uh, when we're having conversations, somebody, somebody brought up, ah, oh, Nigeria doesn't have a welfare okay. system. And I'm always like, what else we do? We have <laughs> but, and, and everybody looks at it and says, no, but uh, how can it be a welfare system? Mm. I was like, you know how many people are employed in Sokoto and live in Lagos, mm. in Sokoto mm -hmm. State Service? Mm. You know how many people are employed in Abuja and are privately, some are even abroad doing yeah. other things, mm -hmm. but yet we're paying so many ghost workers. Now, that's just those being, those being mm -hmm. out of office. Mm -hmm. Let's get to those in the office. Mm -hmm. The average civil service agency, department, except, you know, the very highly placed ones. Mm. It's a place for, you could do your hair there, Uti. Um, we could watch the latest Nigerian movie. Mm. We could, that's the target of what, mm -hmm. what exactly goes on. I've always tried to explain and wonder why the rationale for putting uh, movies, DST and movies, you know, for people to watch in an office, you know, basically ensuring they are redundant. Um, mm -hmm. sales, are, sales of rappers or CAB are a common thing in the civil mm. service. And I would, I would say, I was part of the training, which, you know, is the National Ethics and um, Integrity Policy in Abuja. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was last week I was in Abuja. And this was to try and improve the public sector into understanding the kind of ethics that are available. Um, one of the key things we, 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 um, the policy was pushing for is first to remove, you know, that thought process of tribe 
and religion mm -hmm. out of this thing. And of course, the mediums feed based on the organizations and etc. But it, what is most uh, relevant with the policy is that it tries to remind Nigerians to love a country. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's key and that's what's missing. So most people that are working in the civil service are working for salaries. If you notice any strike that's going to go on in the civil service, it's always about pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no other conversation. Mm -hmm. So nobody wants to work for the country. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should not be paid in case people want mm -hmm. to misconstrue what I'm saying. But I'm saying there's no civil service in the world that that is the first thing on the project. Number one, like I said, we run a welfare system in quite a large um, civil service, one of the largest in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not feasible. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly not efficient. Yeah. Um, I mean, forget feasibility seems like a, way, a long, long way off. But um, the fact that for me, People that work in the civil service, you just know that they can't work anywhere else, right? Yeah. Corporate's not going to hire them. And you kind of sort of say, what are you doing? Like you go into the office and there's lots of people there. And you kind of think to yourself, what is your role? What is your role? What value are you delivering mm -hmm. to the citizens of Nigeria? Mm -hmm. um, before I come to you, Diola, I think I'll go to Noma first. Hi, Noma. Hi, Uti. It's always uh, interesting listening to Kule. Absolutely. Because he always has an angle. <laughs> but he always has an angle and a twist to mm. it. So Kule, I mean, you, you hit the, the nail on the head, really. I, I'm going to ask, so what? Let, let's start with, do we actually have some kind of ethics code, right? in the Nigerian civil service? Is there a guy, I mean, there, I'm sure there, there is, but do, are, are, are these codes effective? And what seems to be the problem with our ethics code of conduct or, you know, the expectations in, in the Nigerian civil service? What is the problem really? So, and how did we even get to where we are now? Yes. <laughs> Wow, no, 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 why you want them to chase me off, off air? So first and for uh, first, first, uh, first and um, to answer your question, there's a code of conduct bureau which of course guides, you know, how um, civil servants act or are within office. There is also um, a few other things. You know, they're even supposed to declare their assets, which is rarely done. Out Nigeria has never had a problem with laws. Mm -hmm. We have some of the most robust laws available in the world. We have more corruption laws than almost any country in the world. Uh, that does not mean, you know, the Niger does not happen to the civil service. But um, looking at the buffet of corruption, mm -hmm. you would ask why. Well, it's simple. Um, education, basic education is hard to come by. Housing is hard to come by. A lot of things are hard to come by. As long as these things are not being provided for a sector that is trying to represent the green, white, green, the problem you're going to have is people dipping their hands into public funds and then abusing their offices. Now, these codes that we have and these laws that we have, I'll give you an example. If it's not followed by the political might, and the, you know, so we're going to separate the civil service a little bit. There's the civil service, those are the permanent secretaries okay. and etc. Those working within. And what has happened most with them is that they have this belief, and you mentioned something close to that. They have this belief that even though there are codes, there are ethics, and someone comes in. And I, I've served as an assistant to a federal minister sometime in um, 2010, uh, to 2010 to about 2012. And the minister will try to, and I'll give an example, the minister tried, again, a Yola prison at the time was being cohabited, meaning if you were a banker and you stole money and, they put, and um, you were a Chadian terrorist, you were, you were, as a female and a mm. male, you would be lumped into, and to separate the prison was about nine million naira, separate it according to the sexes. And um, I remember the PAMSEC then of the Ministry of Women Affairs refused to give in to that particular project, saying that 500 million naira for rappers for a particular um, issue was first, uh, the minister had to sign off on that for them to sign on 9 million, which was going to ensure the cells were, were separated. 
And, you know, it got into quite an, a heated argument. And next thing was soldier go, soldier come, barrack remain. And that's how the civil service looks at mm. things. That is the biggest problem. Yeah. Now, the fact that the president can't just fire a palm set, the president can't do some things, there are laws that don't allow that. Um, it's supposed to safeguard them from politics. But what mm. it has done is that Nigerians, as usual, have engineered it to become thorns in the political office. I'll tell you, the average minister tries to work hard. The average, uh, this, this, is, this is true, it's hard to believe, but I've, uh, being within governance, I've seen this happen. But what is critical to the entire system is that the civil service doesn't care. You'll be shocked to find out that ministers at the end of their tenures cannot have the kind of kitty um, the rest have. Yeah. I don't want to call names. <laughs> the rest have. And then you have these situations where they're the ones that create the hoax. They're the ones that even teach elected officers. No, 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 this is not how it goes. Mm. This is how we do it here. This is how mm. you do it here. This is what you can do. They gain. spread the culture. Yes, they, they spread. It. Yeah, so, mm. so it's going to take a very strong national assembly, which, of course, we know that Nigeria is, um, I don't know, lacking. He's struggling. <laughs> <laughs> For lack of a better word. And it's going to take a very strong national mm. assembly to act and to enforce these laws. It's going to take us having someone who actually understands Nigerian laws to mm. head the Code of Conduct Bureau. It's going to take someone of impeccable character to head the National mm. Orientation Agency and be Minister of Information also mm. to be able to sell the Nigerian idea. You know, when you look at it, there's no actual Nigerian idea. You mm. ask any Nigerian, Nigerian what, dream doesn't exist. what exactly are you doing as a Nigerian? No, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. and everybody will tell you, ah, no, no, no. Uh, do our republic will happen soon. This one, this one, republic. They look at themselves and, you know, it's a problem because most people see themselves from a tribe first mm. and um, not from Nigeria. So, in closing, I would say over 250 ethnic groups and the ethnic group that's supposed to have the largest set of people has the smallest, and that is Nigeria, the tribe called Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, therein mm. lies our problem. Well, on that note, um, allow us to take a short break, and we'll be right back. If you're just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, governance and work ethics of Nigerian civil servants with Kunle Lawa. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp message, 20818-038-4663. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. So, Diola, take it away. <laughs> okay, so um, you mentioned earlier that there actually is um, like a, a, a bylaw or like a book of conduct you know, that guide, that is supposed to guide the public service, um, the civil servants. So are they aware? You know, when you work in a private sector, I mean, when you come in, they onboard induction, you, they do your induction, they do yep. all that. So when people go into ministries or parastatals, are they aware that there is such, you know, guidelines like this? If you do this, this is what happens. This is what you're supposed to do. Are they aware? Because, I mean... In the scheme of things, they can claim ignorance and say, well, nobody said this to me. Nobody told me this is what was expected of me. Nobody gave me my JD. Nobody told me I have KPIs. Nothing. You understand? So are they aware? Yes, I know federally um, you receive the civil service handbook when you are, you are um, employed. Uh, employed. That's at the federal level. Yes, that's at okay. the federal level. Um, I'm not concerned what happens at states, um, but seeing the quality of people in states, there's no need to imagine what happens in states. But, but <laughs> I'll speak at federal level and mm. I'll try to calm down. So at federal level, yes, they are being, they are being, they are being inducted properly. They are being, when they're employed, they're trained. Mm. But it's like our politics and like every other system in Nigeria. There is what is supposed to be. And, and there's is? what we've created as a culture, mm. which, mm -hmm. you know, definition of culture, way of life. So there's what we've created, which is totally away from what is. So at federal level, in some places, there's some agencies you can, and we have too many agencies for a country. Mm. Nigeria has over 1,500 ministries, departments, and agencies, which is crazy. And somewhere like the US has just 37. India has about 40, 48 or 49. Britain at far less. So I, it's, it's crazy that for every cousin we have, or 
second cousin. We have ministry or department to, <laughs> to give him head or mm. DG or, mm. <laughs> or mm. executive secretary. Coming down to state level, it's worse. States have more ministries, departments, mm. agencies mm. than the federal. federal. Well, we, a, a governor thought it wise to have, you know, happiness. Remember we circle, that back, we you, circle back to welfare system, but yes, carry so, on. So, 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 so if you have, of course, a commissioner of happiness, it means you automatically have a ministry of happiness. Mm. And there's nothing like that in the federal. When we go down to local government, this is where it goes berserk. You, a, a, a local government chairman has a secretary on almost anything. Mm -hmm. if, if he came to the Waze show, let's say, four times, you have a secretary of Waze. And you appoint him. And there's nothing exactly. But just to build on Diola's question, shouldn't there be a structure that every state every that should replicate i mean if you were in a in, a, in the corporate world there'd yeah. be an organ organogram that's signed off, off and designed so when i hear you i mean i mean it's, it sounds crazy to say there's you know commission of happiness but what governs that process isn't there something that's laid down that says every state civil service should look like this these are the number of mm -hmm. rules and they're fixed and finite just go and stuff them now this 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 will come and gets interesting at this point so as long as as much as nigeria's clamor for restructuring i'm one of those that have opined we are not exactly ready for it okay so that restructuring by the federal is what gives the governor's power to do commissioner of happiness and etc mm -hmm. when it suits them and that is the governor stepping outside his boundaries, stepping outside the normal uh, clauses of governance, and decided to invent something because he wants to give a sister, a cousin, or a brother, or someone politically affiliated a position. Mm -hmm. So if we, the citizens, take, take this normally and sit down at home and say, this is fine, eh? it's governors, governors do it all the time, the system will continue in that, in that trajectory. So till we as stop mortgaging and saying, okay, no, governor, you can't do this, and you know we all stand out. He has the state house of assembly to check him, but we have state house of assemblies that would even vote against their own autonomy. So mm. what does that tell you? We have a serious problem mm. in this country. So yes, there is a clause of this is how it should be. There is written law, down laws on how it should go. Mm. But like Nigeria has done with almost everything. We go outside the whole system and invent our own culture, which is what happens. Look at, look at what we've done with. I'm sure when, when um, the British came and said, no, you guys should have white weddings, when they see what we're doing in Nigeria, we're like, oh, no, we didn't pretend <laughs> this. <laughs> That's how we are with everything else. Mm. So just to, you know, paint a, a, a simple picture. Um, okay, okay. Cool. Do, you, do you think that, um, I mean, having all these ministries, agencies and all that, it's um, almost like well, some supposedly solution to tackling unemployment. Because, I mean, really, in the, in the scheme of things, a lot of people are unemployed. So a minister or a governor or whoever, some, some influential person, you know, in that, who has that capacity, would say, oh, rather than my child or my relative or whoever to, to be without a job, I mean, we can as well create this and then other people can benefit from it, you know? Okay. The way governance is supposed to work, mm. the more efficient a state is, the more people would not need to work for it. Mm. So if you think you're going to borrow a Stalin model mm. or a Kim Jong-un, the first one of, South, of North Korea mm. model to say the state, we're not in a communist system. Mm. So if you decided, okay, let's take a few things. Um, uh, ICPC, EFCC, mm. NFIU, mm -hmm. counter functions, three agencies. Doing the same um, thing. Police, uh, FRSC, VIO, this is endless, doing the same thing. Standards organization, NAVDAC, checking standards. Mm -hmm. So one is restricted to drugs, but mm. standards is supposed mm -hmm. to cover all standards, that. Standards, yeah. NAVDAC yeah. is supposed had to be department. a department. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it goes all mm. around, replication mm -hmm. and multiplication of functions. Okay. So they're in, okay, yes, you're conquering employment, but now your eff efficiency is poorer, mm. which means the people are not getting dividend of what is exactly supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So therein lies you need to employ more people. When, if the state was functioning properly, 
with fewer people in governance and doing exactly what they were supposed to do, you would not need to go into government employment. In a country that is working, you have less people employed by government. People mm. don't even want to work for yeah. government in yeah. the UK. Yeah. Most people don't want to work for government in the US. Mm. Yeah. Minimal, China, yeah. nobody exactly. wants to work for government. Yeah. So I have a question on metrics and performance management, but let me come to Noma first. Okay, so I wanted to find out with all you've said, Kunle, um, it, it look, the future really looks bleak. So I want to ask, what is the way forward for the Nigerian civil service? We cannot on, uh, uh, but emphasize the fact that this is a critical aspect of governance in Nigeria. And like Uti had said, mentioned earlier, that it's uh, the, the biggest uh, employer of labor. So what is the way forward? How can we restructure the Nigerian civil service to actually begin to function the capacity that it is supposed to function uh, from get-go and uh, maintain that uh, standard? Because it used to be something before now until everything went, went you know, wrong. Okay. Um... But to try to fix this, um, the first uh, usual suspects in this case would be the Secretary of the Federal Government and um, the National Assembly. National Assembly compressing the number of ministries, departments, and agencies. The SFG actually managing and stopped being a ceremonial guy just chilling in the presidency. Till we compress our, our civil service, we will not be able to make it efficient. Secondly, the, the work of civil service is to project the idea of a nation. Mm -hmm. We don't yet have an idea of a nation. So that's something that the Minister of Interior and few relevant agencies and new president have to think about. What exactly is the Nigerian goal? What is it being Nigerian? And it's, it's, it's funny that because we don't get our foot in and we forget that the, we're the most populous black nation in the world. Mm -hmm. And if Nigeria doesn't get it right, the entire black race has failed. The moment Nigeria starts to realize that, it might change. We have no etiquette, we have no plan, we have no direction. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're not able to move forward. So the first thing I'll say is compress the civil service. That's the first thing that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We have so many ghost, ghost workers and such a bad situation with our civil service, that our recurrent expenditure is virtually destroying our budget. Let's not mm -hmm. go into economics now, but mm -hmm. it's, it means that, how would I put it, we're earning, in layman's terms, we're earning one million naira, and we're spending uh, 950,000 on a chef, a driver, and mm -hmm. uh, nannies. Mm. Wow. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I think Norma's question is the question it, with which is a practical. I don't even know how to follow that. I mean, what I was going to ask really comes to performance management. Mm. All of these people are being hired. All of these people are being paid every month. Well, you know, um, they're being paid at some point. Um, how, sh how is their performance currently being measured? Because when we talk about the inefficiencies, when we talk about the bloatedness, when we talk about all of these things, if these um, organizations were being properly run to say, I have 10 people doing this job and at the end of the month I assess their performance. Perhaps I don't need 10. Perhaps I need five and mm. I can look at my processes and make myself more efficient. Is there any kind of performance management happening in that space or is it just a free for all? There are two ways I can answer this question. Mm. Truthfully, or I can paint it. But let me paint it. It's less scary. Mm. So the only way to assess performance in the civil service, though mm. they say they have other parameters, we know they are not in use, is writing promotion exams. Mm. Mm. That's the only assessment. And it, it makes the future really scary because yeah. if you look at the average civil servant, let's say in um, Ministry of Labor or, or uh, NIMASA or Night comes out. Mm -hmm. There are people in night comes out that don't even know whether Nigeria has a satellite or not. Wow. And, you know, there are people in the NMPC mm. that aren't supposed to be in the NMPC. There are people in CBA. It goes round. 
But they write their promotional exams and they pass. Mm. And as long as they pass, they are fine to the country. Mm. The standards, come on. This is a country that has no standard of even governance. We've broken all the standards of governance we're supposed to have. We've broken all the standards of performance we're supposed to have in the civil service. Um, let's be honest. The National Assembly is barely complete, complete in the National Assembly, except it's time to read budget. Mm. That's the only time when the president is coming to present the budget. That's the only time they know the president is coming and everybody tries to be around. And they're never even complete. <laughs> and they're just for 69 mm -hmm. in the two different houses. If that is the message coming from, you know, the elite top notch mm. of the elected officials, what do you think is going down to the civil service? Mm. DG is never around. DG is it's normal in Nigeria for a public official his, his son is graduating in the U.S. and they use yeah. federal mm. government funds to yeah. fly there and go mm -hmm. and celebrate and yep. come back. It doesn't make literal sense. So how do you then ask them for performance parameters? Mm -hmm. When the DG can just say, put you all in a bus and say his grandmother died and everybody in the office must go for must that go. burial. Yeah. And you don't go for that burial, you There's will not problem. be promoted. Yeah. That becomes a performance yeah. issue. Yes, yeah. so that, those are the performance parameters. Mm. DG's, DG's mother's burial. Digi's daughter's wedding, uh, those are performance yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that we've talked so much about the challenges mm -hmm. and Noma sort of talked about the restructuring. Um, my question is just simple. Is there hope? Can we hope to see uh, uh, an efficient, well-run civil service in the near future? Take near as you would define it. So, so the truth is, the biggest joy about it is that Nigeria does not have a structural problem. Mm -hmm. Meaning we have the set down laws. We have, what we have is an institutional problem. Mm -hmm. Meaning these things are not followed, are not paid. If you have a president and a few, you don't need too many ministers. Let's look at 1999. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew NAFDAQ existed till yeah. 1999. Yeah. It, it looked like it was created for Dora Kiyuli. No, it was not. It had existed. And right now, I don't want to, no offense to who's there. Mm. We don't even know they exist. Yeah. Um, the minister of Abuja, best performing minister, of course, was ever fired at the time. You had uh, Frank Nwike Jr. in information. If you walked under a Frank Nwike Jr., there would be that thirst to, to yeah. push forward. That was mm -hmm. when the Ministry of Information was Ministry of Information. I don't want to talk about now. I see. Mm -hmm. You say it's like a Nazi propaganda machine of the Third Reich, but mm -hmm. we'll just say it's something else. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, as always, you know, we always learn so much when we have you on the show, and I can guarantee that he will be back. So thank you for being with us today, Quinley. It's my pleasure. Um, before we go, do ensure that you follow us on Instagram um, at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us, drop a, um, with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, again, here it is. Ethics is not definable, is not implementable because it is not conscious. It involves not only our thinking, but also our feeling. Thank you very much, Diola. Thank you very much, Noma. And we will see you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Have a good evening.